Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss non-coherent orthogonal modulation techniques. Before I begin non-coherent, I would like to contrast the same with respect to coherent detection. You should know to perform demodulation at the receiver, we have two choices. The first one is the coherent detection, which we have been discussing in all our previous topics, that is binary PSK, binary FSK and QPSK as well. And then we have the non-coherent detection. In coherent detection, exact replicas of the possible arriving signals are available at the receiver. This means that the receiver has exact knowledge of the carrier wave's phase reference, in which case we can also say the receiver is in phase lock with the transmitter. On the other hand, when we come to the non-coherent detection, the knowledge of the carrier wave's phase is not required. Please note, it is not required. Therefore, the transmitter and receiver need not be phase locked. This causes the complexity of the receiver to be reduced. However, this reduction in complexity is achieved at the expense of an inferior error performance compared to coherent systems. Let us now move on to non-coherent orthogonal modulation. To understand non-coherent orthogonal modulation, let us consider a binary signaling scheme that involves the use of two orthogonal signals S1 of t and S2 of t, which also have equal energy. During the interval 0 to capital T, one of these two signals are sent over the imperfect channel that shifts the carrier phase by an unknown amount. Please note, the carrier phase is changed during the signal transmission over the imperfect channel. Let G1 of t and G2 of t denote the phase shifted versions of S1 of t and S2 of t respectively. It is assumed that the signals G1 of t and G2 of t remain orthogonal and of equal energy irrespective of the unknown carrier phase. We refer to such a signaling scheme as non-coherent orthogonal modulation. As we have said previously, the channel introduces an additive white Gaussian noise represented by W of t that has a mean equal to 0 and a power spectral density of n0 by 2. Therefore, the received signal which is represented by x of t can be given as x of t equals g1 of t plus W of t or g2 of t plus w of t. The overall objective of non-coherent detection technique would now be to use the received signal x of t to both detect as well as differentiate the transmitted signals s1 of t and s2 of t irrespective of the carrier signal's phase. Now, to satisfy this objective, we will use the receiver scheme shown in the figure here. Please note, it is a binary receiver. As we can see, the receiver consists of a pair of filters that are matched to the orthonormal basis functions phi1 of t and phi2 of t respectively. Because the carrier phase is unknown, the receiver now relies completely on the amplitude as the only possible discriminant to estimate the transmitted signal. Therefore, the output signals of the matched filters are envelope detected, then sampled and finally compared with each other using a comparator. Let the output of the upper path be denoted by L1 and the output of the lower path be denoted by L2. These represents the amplitudes of the samples at the corresponding sampling instance. If the amplitude L1 of the upper path is greater than the amplitude L2 of the lower path, the receiver then decides in favor of signal S1 of t, which is given here as if L1 is greater than L2, choose S1 of t. On the other hand, if the amplitude L2 of the lower path is greater than amplitude L1 of the upper path, the receiver then decides in favor of signal S2 of t, that is, if L1 is less than L2, then choose S2 of t. If in case the amplitudes L1 and L2 are equal, then a decision may be made by flipping a fair coin. 
which means you can make a decision in favor of either S1 of t or S2 of t. Using such a decision rule, it is possible for the system to sometimes make a erroneous decision. An erroneous decision occurs when the matched filter that rejects the signal component of the received signal x of t has a larger output amplitude than the matched filter that passes it. For example, if symbol 1 or signal S1 of t is transmitted and the amplitude of L1 is lesser than the amplitude of L2, then the receiver decides in favor of symbol 0. This in fact is an error because S1 of t represents symbol 1. Very similarly, if symbol 0 or signal S2 of t is transmitted and the amplitude L2 is lesser than amplitude L1, then the receiver decides in favor of symbol 1. This again is an error because the transmitted signal is S2 of t which represents symbol 0, but the decision is made in favor of S1 of t which represents symbol 1. So, these are the two types of erroneous decisions the receiver can make in this scenario. It is also possible to have a different interpretation of the receiver that is shown here. And this is given in this diagram. Please note this complete part represents one of the matched filters in the binary receiver shown here. So, this is in fact a quadrature receiver that is equivalent to either the matched filter in the upper path or the one in the lower path. Let us now discuss about this quadrature receiver. As can be clearly seen, the quadrature receiver also has two paths. The upper path, which is also called as the in-phase path, the received signal x of t is correlated against the basis function phi i of t, where phi i of t represents a scaled version of the transmitted signal s1 of t or s2 of t with zero carrier phase. Coming to the lower path, which is also called as the quadrature path, x of t is correlated against another basis function x i cap of t. This represents the version of x i of t that results from shifting the carrier phase by minus 90 degree. It should be noted that phi i of t and phi i cap of t are orthogonal to each other. Coming to the correlator outputs, let x i i denote the output of the correlator in the in phase channel and x q i denote the output of the correlator in the quadrature phase channel. These correlator outputs are then given to square law detectors that squares the values to create x i i square and x q i square as in phase channel and quadrature phase channel outputs respectively. These squared values are then added to create the receiver output L i square as per the equation L i square equals x i i square plus x q i square. It should be noted that the variable L here represents the amplitude of the transmitted signal. Now, since the quadrature receiver what we have shown here is either matched filter 1 or matched filter 2 here, the output of the matched filter here in the binary receiver can have two values because I have given i here and i can take two values which is 1 and 2 as per the equation 2 here. Therefore, when I substitute this complete block diagram into the matched filter, as per the diagram here, each branch will create two variables which is x i i square and x q i square. These values are then envelope detected and then sampled to produce the coefficient L1 and L2 respectively. Let us now move on to the average probability of error. Please note, I am not going to discuss the derivation for the average probability of error. However, I am going to provide the final expression for the same for your reference. Please note, the average probability of error for non-coherent orthogonal modulation technique is given by probability of error equals 1 by 2 exponential of minus capital E by 2n naught, where capital E denotes the transmitted signal energy per symbol and N0 in fact is a part of the power spectral density of white Gaussian channel noise. Right, with that brief discussion, I end this video on non-coherent orthogonal modulation. If you like this video, 
kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.